everyone. My name is Isabella Caruso, and I am the Regional Epidemiologist for the Greater Boroughs Partnership for Health. So this includes Boylston, North Borough, South Borough, and West Borough. And today we are recording a PSA for under five-year-olds vaccines, and I will pass it over to Ariella. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ariella Levison. I'm a medical and public health student at Tufts University in Boston. And this summer, I'm working with Isabella at the Greater Boroughs Partnership for Health. So as Isabella mentioned, we'll be talking today about COVID vaccines for children under five. And on June 18th, 2022, children under five first became eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccines. As of July 18th, just a month after approval, only 8% of children six months to four years old have received their first COVID vaccine, according to Massachusetts Department of Public Health data. All right, so today again we'll be talking about the most up to date and accurate information on childhood COVID 19 vaccines and answering common questions that were asked by local families. So, Dr. Medina, thank you so much for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourself and share your role within the realm of pediatric COVID 19? Sure, thank you. So, my name is Safdar Medina. I'm a uh, pediatrician with UMass Memorial Healthcare, and I work at the community health center run by UMass in Uxbridge. Um, I'm a resident of Southboro and a parent of two teenagers in Southboro, and I also um, consult for uh, our local school district. So, thank you so much for having me today to uh, discuss this very important topic, and that is protecting our littlest ones um, against COVID 19. Great, thank you so much for being here. So to get started, could you please share your experience with the under five-year-old COVID vaccine uptake, uptake and has it been similar to older age groups or different and in what way? So I think we have definitely found that the uptick of COVID-19 vaccine in this particular age group has been significantly lower than it has been in teenagers and school-age children. And, you know, parents have cited a number of factors um, for this, both concerns about safety, efficacy, and have also generally questioned the need to vaccinate um, the, the youngest of our population. So we'll definitely be talking a little bit about that later. Um, but to start off, can you talk a little bit about the difference between the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines and whether you would recommend one over the other? Great question. So the two vaccines use different amounts of messenger RNA um, and have other differences in composition. And I typically will recommend either one and parents can be comfortable with either one. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine um, is three doses. The vaccine uh, made by Pfizer was first tested using two doses and adding the third dose was found to be more effective at protecting babies and young children from the Omicron variant that is, of course, the most common variant circulating in the United States right now. And therefore, the vaccine is a three-dose series. Moderna is a two-dose vaccine series and was only tested using two doses. They found these two doses to be very safe and effective. Right now, Moderna is studying a possible third dose of their vaccine as well, so it's possible that that um, uh, series may turn into a three-dose series as well. Great, and you talked a little bit about safety already, but could you talk a little bit about the efficacies of these vaccines, especially since we know that you still can get COVID if you have been vaccinated? So how safe are these vaccines? How effective are they at preventing disease and severe disease? Thank you for that question. That's a great question. And so babies and young children six months to five years of age who get COVID-19, you know, will likely get protection similar to what older kids get. The level of protection from mild symptoms of COVID infection is likely less than 50%. Both vaccines are expected to be much more effective at preventing hospitalization and other serious complications of COVID-19 that have been found in this age group. It's really important to know that no significant safety concerns were raised in the trials. Thousands of children were in these studies and there were no children with serious allergic reactions, heart inflammation, or other serious problems related to the vaccines that may worry parents. We also now know that millions of children over the age of five um, have safely received COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you. And given that the trials for the vaccines were somewhat fast, maybe compared to development of other vaccines, does that change any concerns about safety or efficacy? It did not. I feel very confident in the um, FDA's process. And when we look at how 
carefully these vaccines have studied. In fact, no other vaccines have been studied this carefully as much as the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you. So again, you spoke about this a little bit, but I was hoping you could just um, summarize the common side effects of the vaccines, if there are any, as well as any known long-term side effects. Sure. So the mo most parents, of course, are familiar with the minor side effects that vaccines can cause in children. And these are the same that we see with other routine childhood immunizations. Um, this can be soreness and redness at the injection site. Some babies and children may not feel well later that day or possibly the next day, and a small number of vaccinated children may get a fever, and very few get a high fever. Usually that fever does not last more than a day or two, and it is definitely a, an immune response um, that the body is um, implementing to the vaccine. Right now, there are no known long-term side effects. And from what we know about vaccines in general, that they are very short-lived guests in our body, and their role is to induce an immune response. Thank you. And we know there've also been some concerns raised by parents about myocarditis. Heard a lot about that in the news. I was wondering if you have any more insight into what that is and whether that's um, a concern for children. So right now, as I mentioned, the trials in, um, with children under the age of five showed no evidence of myocarditis. Um, we do know that we did see cases of myocarditis last year in young men, older teenage males and young men, primarily after the second dose of the Moderna vaccine. It's also very important to know that those were rare, and when they did occur, they were very mild and self-limiting. We also know now, looking at data, that you are more likely to get COVID myocarditis from a COVID-19 infection, which can potentially be more serious than myocarditis caused by the vaccine. Thank you. Yeah, that's helpful to hear. So the risk of myocarditis is actually higher with a COVID-19 infection versus compared to when you actually get the vaccine. Yes, yes. Um, so I guess kind of building off of that, we've heard some parents asking whether the effectiveness and safety of the vaccine is worth the potential risk, especially considering that children who get COVID-19 vaccine, COVID-19 infections have a very high survival rate. Yes, that is a great question. That's probably, you know, probably the single most common question that I've heard from parents um, of young children this past month. Um, so we can feel very confident those studies showed no serious reaction. So we can be confident about the safety of the vaccine. Now, it's very true that the survival rate among children is very high compared to adults and particularly older adults. And, you know, we do know that by and large children do get mild illness. However, children have not been without the burden of severe illness and complications, including MIC or multi-inflammatory system, um, uh, system failure in children, which has occurred after COVID-19 infection, even in the youngest of our children. Um, and it's important to know that vaccination can prevent um, MISC, and this was shown in older children. So I think, you know, looking at that as a whole, I think it's definitely worth getting the vaccine, even for the um, small, small risk there is of severe illness. And we Thank do, you, that, oh, I'm sorry, so I was gonna add that, you know, some many of the routine childhood immunizations that we give have somewhat similar rates of severe illness in children. Um, so it, it's important to look at the big picture on why we vaccinate children. It's to prevent any death or any child from getting seriously ill. Thank you so much. That was a really helpful explanation. So switching gears a little bit, I'm wondering for children who have recently had COVID-19, gotten infected with the virus, should they still be getting the vaccine? And if so, how long after recovering from their infection should they receive the vaccine? So if they've had a COVID-19 infection, they should still get the vaccine. And that is according to CDC guidelines. Uh, the benefits of COVID-19, the vaccine, of course, that way the risks of being infected, which we know, and um, they can get the vaccine pretty much soon after their isolation period ends per any uh, local public health guidelines. It's important to know that, you know, it, while infection does infer us with immunity, um, a repeat infection can potentially still lead to complications such as MISC, and that's where we know that vaccination can prevent help prevent MISC. So getting vaccinated um, pretty soon after infection would be ideal. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. And then we've also been wondering and heard from some parents about whether they'll be updating the 
series for vaccines depending on uh, new variants such as Omicron and whether boosters will be available for this population eventually? That's a great question. So, you know, Moderna um, has created a bivalent, bivalent COVID-19 vaccine booster that may provide a superior response against the Omicron variant and potentially could be distributed this fall for adults. It does plan to study um, a similar vaccine and booster series in children. Of course, ultimately, public health officials um, will decide when to update um, any schedule for the pediatric vaccines. So because the timeline um, is not clear at this point, we should go ahead with the primary series to offer our children the protection that it gives. Thank you. And then thinking about going back to school and some of the vaccines, other routine vaccinations that children are getting, such as the flu, is it safe to get the COVID vaccine at the same time as other routine vaccinations? Yes, um, you know, we are actually administering the COVID-19 vaccine at well visits along with other routine childhood immunizations. Um, our immune systems are great at multitasking and they do it 24 hours a day. So really adding another um, vaccine to a schedule does not overwhelm our immune systems. Um, and, and it's important because we also want to make sure that our children stay up to date um, on all vaccine preventable illnesses. Great. And our last question is, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues, do you think that the COVID-19 vaccines will ever become routine? Like for example, the flu shot that's given every year? That's a great question. Of course, there's still a lot of unknown, um, you know, as far as that goes. Um, and right now we are still, you know, looking at, you know, how this pandemic is evolving. Um, could it be like some vaccines where a finite number of doses is enough? Or would it be something that we would have to be boosted with annually as it evolves? I think there's probably, you know, more to come on that as far as research goes. And, you know, in terms of could it be combined, you know, with the, um, you know, flu shot, you know, the flu vaccine is derived from inactivated viral particles. So it's a different method of delivery than these messenger RNA vaccines. Um, we know Moderna is investigating a potential mRNA flu vaccine that could be combined with a COVID vaccine if this were to become more of a routine vaccine. Um, and Novavax, which um, was recently approved for adults, also uses um, spike protein um, to induce an immune response. So potentially that could be combined with an inactivated flu as well. And research is being done on that. Well, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, I was just wondering if there's any other comments that you want the community to know or any other questions that have been raised in your own practice that you think would be helpful for uh, the Greater Borough Partnership as well as the surrounding towns to understand. Yeah, I think, you know, we're now two to over two years into this pandemic. And I think this is a tool that we have that has prevented serious illness and, and death in older adults. Um, it's prevented complications in teenagers. And I think, you know, we, we owe it to our youngest children to, to help them in the same way, despite the low incidence of severe complications in them. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Medina. This has been very helpful. Thank you so much. And just to everyone watching, we will be providing links of more information about the vaccine, as well as where you can get the COVID-19 vaccine in our local region. And please feel free to send any questions to me. My email is icaruso at town.northborough.ma.us. And again, thank you so much. This was really helpful. Thank you for putting it all together.